Welcome back and thank you for choosing Current Connected. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a fun project with one of these SOK 12 slot outdoor rated racks. I have it set up here with all of the shelves removed from the left hand side. We're going to be putting an inverter in there. I have set up on the table here a Midnight Rosie. This is a 48 volt 7000 watt inverter. We also have the mounting back plate here on the right and the e-panel for it on the left. And this has all of the breakers we need for battery, AC input, and a bypass transfer switch. And this is going to be going down at a well pump so that um, the generator powering the well only needs to run a little bit to recharge the batteries. And then it can go back to inverter mode um, to run the well the rest of the time. For batteries, we have here on the pallet jack four of the SOK 48 volt 100 amp hour rack batteries. These are the NCBT um, base model version. However, if you were trying to copy this project, you could use either the same version or the pro one that has the LCD screen. It also could use any other battery such as a Ruxu or EG4 battery, no problem. These racks can fit all sorts of different things. So getting started, I'm going to be mounting the back plate for the Rosie here on the left hand side of this cabinet. You can see there are some um, metal brackets in here. These are what I'm going to be mounting that back plate in with some screws. We'll get you some closer shots up on this whole thing, but um, it'll be a fun project and a great solution for the well pump here at, uh, at my parents' place. Jumping right in, I got this back plate mounted already. I used two self-drilling, self-tapping screws here in the holes at the top. Panning down a little bit, we have the holes in the middle. Those I just went ahead and used one of the M6 screws that was part of the rack that held the shelves in. Went right into one of the threaded inserts there. And then at the bottom, I used two more of those self-drilling, self-tapping screws and just went through the bracket into that bottom uh, white piece that's going from left to right right there. So this is in there solid, it's not going anywhere, and we can go ahead and start getting the inverter mounted. The first piece I'm gonna wanna mount is this E-panel. Now for those of you that aren't familiar, this front cover comes off, and in here we have connections for all of our AC, and then the positive right here for our DC connection, and there's a shunt in here for state of charge monitoring, and that is our negative DC connection. We have a shutoff breaker. This is a 300 amp breaker. This is for the DC side of the inverter, and there is a bypass transfer switch right here. So let's say I'm feeding in generator down here on the in L1 and L2, and something's wrong with the inverter, I can put the breaker in this position and it'll bypass the inverter and feed power straight to the load, in our case, the well pump. Or if we switch to the other side, we're gonna be using the transfer switch within the inverter, and that's what's gonna select between generator power and battery power. And when we're in this mode, the battery charger on the inverter will run and replenish the batteries. So this makes things really easy too, because I'm just gonna be powering a NEMA 1450 outlet, and these overcurrent protection devices are 60 amps, so I can just run my six gauge cable straight to my power outlet, and I'll be ready to go in terms of uh, overcurrent protection for this inverter. Now this panel is expandable. As you can see, there are some blanks here that can come out for PV and AC input. So we could put some breakers in here later on if we wanted to add a solar charge controller to this. It makes it really easy and simple for our wiring here. So uh, that's why I chose to use one of these for this project. This back plate makes mounting this E-panel really easy um, because there's already threaded inserts in here. So I can just line it all up, get my screw started and get all the other screws in now um, very easily instead of trying to figure out, you know, how I'm gonna mount all of these different screws into the actual rack itself. I'm just gonna leave these screws in there a little bit loose so that I have some wiggle here and I can maneuver things into place once I start bringing the inverter um, down on top of this E-panel. Getting this inverter prepared to go onto the E-panel, the first thing I need to do is take the um, screws off of the battery terminals that way the studs here can easily just drop through the bus bars. With those terminals ready to go, I also got the cover screws taken off and we get our first looks inside the Rosie. This inverter is absolutely beautiful. You can tell there's no leads all flying around like we see on some Asian made inverters. Everything is very clean and well laid out. Now this is technically a high frequency inverter by you know, most standards. 
Um, however, the surge capacity on this inverter is incredible. This is engineered and assembled in the United States by midnight there in Arlington, Washington. And this is nothing like any of the other inverters we really ever work with. It's pretty impressive. Now this was a little bit of a challenge to get set on the e-panel because these wires are pretty stiff and getting them all in the right holes and openings and stuff was, uh, was definitely tricky. There are some plastic grommets that go in the knockouts and it appears that the thickness of the bottom of the inverter is not allowing them to actually stay snapped in here. So I may have to get a little bit creative there, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, all stripped back and landed on the terminals. I made sure to pay attention to the ones marked AC in to go to the AC input side and then the AC out to go to the AC output side. Before I continue any further, I'm gonna get these DC terminals bolted to the bus bars in the E panel. So these are a half inch head on these bolts and uh, I'm just gonna use an end wrench here to tighten them up. This is definitely a time to get help from the apprentice. This is a little squeezy in here, but I'm just getting the cables uh, stripped back and uh, put into the inverter here. Okay, all of the AC input and output connections are made. These were a little bit tricky to get in there. I did have to move AC output neutral to the knockout on the bottom left of this, but uh, the grommets are in the holes protecting the wires. Everything is good to go. So now the next thing I think we're gonna be doing is just getting the E-panel wired up. To control all this, we're gonna be using Midnight's talking display. I've never used this thing, so I'm definitely interested to see like how it works and that kind of thing. Now there are four screws that mount this to the plastic back box and with that removed we have access to mounting holes and stuff. However, I, I didn't really like that option so I went ahead and drilled a quarter inch hole. Well, it's a little over a quarter inch. I used a step drill and I'm going to be using one of the bolts that held the rack together to go through that on the side and then I'll show you where I'm going to mount this to the rack. This threaded insert is where I'll be mounting the bracket. So I have my number three Phillips right here. And just like that, now we can put the display right there. So it'll be really intuitive to just open the door of this cabinet and see what's going on right there. The Cat5 cable that goes to our display will plug right here into the can out of the Rosie. And then the other end just plugs into the back of the display. Down here in the E panel is the bolt that our battery negative connects onto the shunt. Now this bolt is a M10, so I'm actually gonna need to drill my lugs out to 3 8 Currently they're only a 5 16th. The batteries are all prepped with the rack here, so they're ready to go into the rack. And all of the square shaped nuts are put in the rack ready for the batteries to bolt right in. I'll be using the short jumpers that come with the rack to get our connections made to the bus bars here, just like that. And then the cover that comes with the battery can go over to protect the terminal. Perfect. This lug is drilled out and ready to go into the inverter. I punched a hole here in the side. This is just one of the normal knockouts. So I can feed this cable in and get it landed on that shunt I showed a second ago. Now this other end is already attached to our bus bar. So this is kind of where it's gonna go. And then um, I'm gonna just put a uh, bracket right here to hold that cable in place. So at this point, all of our DC connections are done. Just to recap, we have our positive connection down here on this bus bar. It then loops around and runs across the bottom here to the inverter. And then the negative connection is all the way up here. We're going from the top of the negative bus bar, so that way everything has equal circuit length. And then we run across the top here. There are some channels that it runs in and then down into the inverter. At this point, we're ready for the AC wiring. 
For the outlet, I have a NEMA 1450 outdoor enclosure here. This is gonna be what the well pump we're powering with this project is gonna plug into. And then to get power from the generator, I have an RV 1450 extension cord, and I'm gonna cut this end off because this is a little bit of an older cord and it's not in the best shape. And then I will strip it back, use a cord grip and run it straight into the E-panel. This will just coil up in the bottom of this bay and uh, when power is needed, they can bring their generator to this, um, plug this into the generator with the door open, you know, for airflow. We need airflow when, uh, when this is charging. Uh, and then when they're all finished, they can wind the cord up, shut the door, and be ready to go. This outlet has one inch knockouts on the back. So what I'm gonna do is use a rigid coupling here with a chase nipple, and that will extend the knockout essentially into the cabinet. So I can go ahead and just mount this here, put a knockout in the cabinet, that whole fitting will come through, and then we can attach onto this with our seal tight to get into the E-panel. So we'll be using a one inch chase nipple that'll go on the inside of the box. And then on the outside, we'll be using a rigid coupling. And now I can tighten this down with some channel locks and that's what'll get us in the enclosure. And then I can use my seal tight 90 off of there to go down to the inverter. I'll be entering in this knockout on the bottom right of the E-panel. So my seal tight, I'll just need to cut it a little bit and then I'll put my 90 degree fitting going up and then we'll just pull our uh, six gauge wires through there and it'll be pretty much perfect. All right, there we have our three number six hots a neutral and a number 10 ground. Let's get this all pulled in and fed through the seal tight. Now that this outlet is all wired in, I will need to come back with some uh, silicone because this uh, hole I punched for that conduit fitting right there does have a little bit of a gap where water could get into the enclosure, and I certainly don't want that. Our wires enter here like we talked about, and now I'm just gonna get these cut, stripped back, and landed on the terminals. Our power inlet cord is now stripped back and ready to go into the E-panel, so I'm just gonna use one of the knockouts here at the bottom and then secure it in place with a lock ring. This is certainly tight in here, so I'm doing my best to get you guys a shot here. I have a nice big service loop on our AC output going to that outlet, and you can see now our cables coming in from that power cord are landed on the AC input terminals. There's that shunt and um, power coming in on the left there for you, so you can kind of get a better idea of what it looks like inside of this E-panel. All right, so our power cord is all in and we're pretty much ready to power this thing up. So starting up these batteries is a little bit tricky. I gotta get AC power uh, into the inverter and then the inverter will start charging the batteries and that will get them turned on. So we're gonna have to get this thing closed up and move to where there's power. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So we got this set in place down here at our beautiful well, and it is on some four by four blocks down here at the bottom. Um, essentially everything made it down the hill just fine. Um, going back inside, we're now ready to take our, um, our cable out here and get it plugged on into the generator. There is a uh, 14 kilowatt diesel generator down here, and uh, this is what we normally run the well with, but our goal here is to um, you know, like I said, save, save the runtime. So I'm going to get this plugged in and then uh, once we get the generator going, we can turn it on and stuff. But the first thing I want to know is, can this Rosie power the well pump? So first I'm going to try powering it and then I'll put that E-panel in bypass mode and we can look at the meters on the generator and see just what kind of current it takes because the, um, 
meters on the generator will give us a pretty good idea of what the inrush is. So I turned on the battery breaker on the inverter, and it looks like it should be powering up here. We have the display um, booting on up. Okay, so we're good to go. We can see here on the display we're inverting. So now we can go ahead. So now we can go ahead and plug the well in here and see if the inverter shuts down. In three, two, one. Hey, it's working. Awesome. So we have a tube down here. This is just our um, water flush. Um, essentially, we can just drain water here, so it's not actually pumping up the hill. But uh, down here at the end, we have quite a bit of water coming out. This is about 16 gallons a minute. Like I said, this hose is just a flush of water, so it's not, you know, I don't really care that the hose is uh, cut up. So we can see that well is drawing about 4,400 watts. Right now we have nothing coming in from AC. We're drawing about 87 amps from the battery. So now let's uh, get that generator going so that uh, we can start recharging the batteries. And I also want to see, you know, how is the generator loaded with this inverter charging the batteries and running the well at the same time. Okay, we just kicked in. We can see there was about 17 amps and that is just the well pump transferred over. Now with the battery charger running, we're a little under 50 amps. That's gonna be like about 46 amps. And that's a happy spot actually for this generator. It's a 14 kilowatt generator. So that's just about perfect. So we can see now we have about 9,000 watts coming in and 4,300 watts still going out to that well pump. So this is literally perfect and about 100 amps going into the batteries. So these batteries would take about three hours of generator time to recharge. And I remember seeing about 90 amps or so of load on the batteries when we were in inverting mode. So that means we would get about a little over three hours of runtime um, on, on batteries. So figure about an hour per battery here uh, running this well pump. But the inverter is definitely handling it great and uh, I'm definitely pleased with that.